Hi folks, Gavin here from G Sport and just wanted to do a quick video and as the title of the video will probably suggest uh, it's going to be a bit of a rant today as Charlie's doing his usual video interrupts in there uh, so yeah we're having a bit of a rant today and the rant is mainly mainly about thermostats um, and mainly about people who remove thermostats that's probably more the point uh, do not re remove your thermostat from your engine if you have a heating or you know a cooling problem or a heating problem or whatever whatever you want to call it uh, you know don't remove the thermostat certainly remove it remove it to test uh, test it properly you know there's, there's simple ways put it in a, uh, you know a, a pot of boiling water and that sort of thing see if it opens easy to do um, don't leave it out put it back in or replace it with a new one preferably replace it with a new one because they're cheap to buy there's no reason why you wouldn't replace it with a new one um, and I'll, I'll go through a couple of points of, of why you should need to keep your thermostat in so uh, this we're currently sitting in here in the in the Supra uh, just got it rebuilt and again I'm going to use the Supra for a couple of videos a few examples and, and different bits and bobs um, just to show you guys stuff you know stuff that I'm talking about so uh, let me just go back and the reason I have to go back to screen is because I've tried to do this video twice now and each time it's been over 17 minutes long <laughs> so it's not just a small around this uh, but yeah so this is our warm-up enrichment table here in the link software again just an example but it gets the point across so uh, basically we have engine cooling temperature along the top here um, along the or down the side we have throttle position ignore the throttle position just basically look at the top two rows which is our cooling temperature and our values all the values are the same anyway as we go down so um, pretty much you know th this is a this is a fuel additive table so it, it, it runs off the off the back of the main fuel table and basically means that you know over and above your main fuel table you will have this uh, extra percentage amount of fuel uh, being added into your fuel uh, you know your final fuel pulse width or whatever it may be um, so in simple terms you know at, at 20 degrees cooling temperature the ECU will be putting in an extra 22 percent fuel uh, at 30 degrees 18 and so on and so on and so on this is required simply because uh, when the engine's cold the fuel is cold um, it's on warm up uh, everything you know the fuel doesn't atomize as well and, and other various reasons so it requires you to put extra fuel in to keep the engine running sort of happy without it you know same same sort of idea as a choke is what you used to have on the old carbs and, and that sort of thing it's the exact same thing just done uh, electronically so you can see here all our zeros here uh, start at 80 degrees um, so excuse my shaky hand it's freezing in this workshop today so we all started at uh, 80 degrees reason being i have now fitted a thermostat to this engine and the opening temperature of the thermostat is 82 degrees so i know that the engine's going to heat up as normal and it won't ever drop below 80 degrees under normal operating conditions um yes there's other things that will bring you outside normal operating conditions but generally speaking it should be 80 degrees and above when the engine's running when it's up the operating temperature if it does start to drop below that we're getting additional fuel added in um, which is not what you want under normal conditions uh, so people pull thermostats out because they think it's going to make their car run better run cooler it will run cooler but it will not be controlled um, I'll add a, a, a picture into this video here um, as well it was from a, a user on another Facebook group and what he did was he went out on a track and I think it was a VW Golf GTI and he did took some data logs uh, and on one uh, one trip out in the track he he did a lap or a couple of laps or whatever it may be uh, with his thermostat in and then he went out and did the same again with his thermostat removed and he overlaid the, the data logs and I'll pop a picture in here in the video so you should be able to see here somewhere along the line uh, there'll be a video with two graphs and I think if I remember right the top graph has the thermostat fitted and the one on the bottom half of the, the picture has the thermostat removed and you'll be able to tell pretty pretty clearly because 
the one with the the much sort of steadier uh, blue line is the is with the thermostat in, and the one with the the line that sort of goes up and down and up and down, uh, you know, as it goes across the screen is with the thermostat out, and you can see the temperature fluctuate fluctuates quite a bit, um, which is not what you want because it's not controlled. And also keep in mind he was driving on a track, so he always had airflow through the car. Um, you know, he wasn't sitting in traffic heat soaking or anything like this. Um, I'm sure his fans weren't on because he was driving on the track and, you know, he would have been on throttle and off throttle. And you can see even just this, where, you know, if he was on throttle and off throttle, that's probably where the temperature was going up and down and up and down. Uh, that's not what you want. You want a nice steady temperature. You can probably see in the in the, the top graph or the, the, the one with the thermostat that his temperature only fluctuated by, you know, two or three degrees maybe. Uh, which, which again is what you want. So don't remove your thermostat. If you if a car comes into me for tuning and it has a thermostat removed, um, I can almost guarantee the customer that it's going to, you know, take longer to tune simply because I have to keep jumping out, um, you know, jumping out, turning the dyno fans off and turning the dyno fans on and dyno fans off and dyno fans on and and all that sort of stuff. It's it's pointless. It's it's no good. Just keep the thermostat in there. Uh, another point to note on this as well is in this car not only had somebody taken a the thermostat out they had also wired in a couple of electric fans um, but hadn't wired them to the ECU or any kind of thermostatically controlled switch they had wired them to a switch uh, in the center console here you see these two little boils here. This is the way these guys had this melt, or, or sorry, wired up previously was. Sorry, this one on the left was doing the fans. So this controlled the fans, and this one coincidentally controlled uh, how to melt the turbo, because this was the anti lag switch, which was which ended up in a melted turbo, um, which some people may have seen in a previous video again. So beggars belief what what they were doing. Um, don't wire your fans to a switch. And the reason being, you cannot guarantee, uh, in fact I can pretty much guarantee you that there's no human who will remember every single time that is required to turn a fan on, an engine fan on, in a car. It just won't happen. Um, you know, there'll be some day you're either sitting in traffic or some day you're sitting trackside or some day you do something and the, the car will be ticking over. You'll forget to, turn, forget to turn the fan on. And next thing you'll get the opportunity to, to clear whether the traffic clears or whether you get the go ahead to go out the track and you'll put it down the, the you know the start straight or, or whatever it may be and you'll not even realize that your engine temperature could be 100 plus degrees and you come in the boost or whatever and especially if you, t you tend to find that people who have done silly things I guess also haven't put other engine safety parameters in you know things like boost cut above a certain temperature or you know they'll have like manual boost controllers in and and all this will be it's just sort of cheap and cheerful all right it'll work on, on a good day on a bad day everything will go peak tong and it will all combine and you'll end up with a melted engine um, that's, that's just the way it goes so uh yeah don't don't buy your fans in this switch what i've done here again i'll show you quickly because i don't want this to be a 17 minute long video as well <laughs> I'll have to do it again. Uh, let me just go to. Hold on, I'll stop looking at my camera and look at the screen. Let's see what I'm doing. So, auxiliary. Oh, there we go. Engine fan. Yeah. So, um, okay, forget about uh, engine fan 2 and engine fan 3. They're not being used. Uh, simply want to look at engine fan 1. So, engine fan 1, temperature uh, 89 degrees and engine fan 2, or sorry, engine fan 1, hysteresis is uh, 4 degrees. Um, basically that means that once the temperature reaches 89 degrees, the fan will switch on and it will stay on until the temperature drops by 4 degrees. So it will stay on until the temperature drops to 85 degrees and then the fan will switch off and then obviously it will go through the same cycle again and again. That is about as complicated as it really has to get and um, there are other more complicated systems in there but that is one wire from the ECU that goes to a relay and controls the fans it's simple easy straightforward and you never have to worry about switching the fan on again uh, to add to that as well the hysteresis uh, you can't you can't 
put the hysteresis any higher than 10 but uh, for example if somebody had been a bit silly uh, and put that to say you know 84 degrees and then put their hysteresis to 10 degrees now that can be done but it's not the right way to set it up simply because the thermostat opens at 82 degrees so it means the fan will come on at 84 which is fine if you want to have that but it, the fan will never go off until the engine is switched off and cools down again because it will it will the fan will stay on until the engine temperature drops by 10 degrees and it won't ever be able to drop by 10 degrees in, in this instance because the thermostat will close and it will stop the flow to the radiator and hence you know stop the fans doing any any sort of work so just one of those points if you're ever setting up something like that make sure you set it up uh, in line with what your your thermostat will open or sorry your, your thermostat opening temperature uh, you can get different thermostat opening temperatures uh, I used to have one in a 2JZ you know many years ago which was a TRD thermostat and it opened at 72 degrees uh, which was fine and I simply tuned everything in the map around that so that it suited that all the fuel trims and everything were, were geared to suit the 72 degrees opening temperature which meant I had a bit more headroom as well uh, if it did start to overheat it would have had to heat it overheated an extra 10 degrees before uh, something really did any damage over what it would have done previously um, so yeah that, that's that's pretty much it apart from sorry I'll nearly let you get away these little boils here I've pulled about three or four of these out of this car which just sort of shows you um, how much somebody really cared about wiring this car up um, and there are still other issues you know dice lights still flicker and do stupid things I'm fairly sure I'm going to find several more of these in the car these are what's known as scotch clips or some people may, may have other names for them I know them as a scotch clip and they are the worst invention ever uh, just do not fit them to their car there's two reasons why you shouldn't fit these to their car um, one is they're crap and the other one is they will cause either you or the person working on your car endless endless headaches and problems because they're usually hidden everywhere behind dashboards and um, you know in behind panels and people never clip them on right you know if somebody's stupid enough to use those then they're probably stupid enough not to to fit them right and they're just they're just not worth using uh, <laughs> they're not they're rubbish don't do it uh, make a proper electrical connection or get somebody who can um, don't use a scots clip don't remove your thermostat and if you're going to fit radiator fans then wire them up pro properly so they're controlled so you don't get a surprise someday when your engine creeps over temperature and you come on boost or whatever it may be and melt a piston or something along those lines um, so thanks for watching hopefully as I've survived that, that bit of a rant I'm sure there's going to be more uh, as, we, as we do some more work on this car uh, and other cars but um, yep just a couple of points there and I'll see you guys all next time